started to say, uh, we're here to discuss the future of U.S. foreign policy and the role that soft power and cultural diplomacy will likely play in the United States foreign policy and in other countries' foreign policy strategies in the future. Uh, first, though, I'd, I would like to thank uh, the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy for putting this on and also to uh, salute all of you who are here and have been here during the course of the day. Uh, it's very, it really is inspiring to see uh, your interest in this subject and uh, the uh, uh, questions that I've heard raised in the discussion uh, certainly uh, reward uh, the time that you've spent and, and your, your interest. We, uh, we face an increasingly interdependent and international environment in which diplomacy, strategic negotiations, and the understanding of the cultures of different countries and peoples, using that term in the broadest sense, and citizen-to-citizen -citizen relationships will play as important a role as other more traditional methods of international relations, including military capacity and economic influence. Uh, can I help you here? <laughs> you seem to be... <laughs> I don't know. We, we have another... All right. Well, I thought it would be best just to has pause and uh, then get on with this uh, once we're, we're working again. That looks like one that ties on. Thank you. All right. I think we're we're we're, uh, uh, we're underway now. Is that correct? Okay, and uh, we're we're still only going to use soft power, <laughs> but effective soft power to proceed. American policy makers have been using soft power and consensus building to further American interests throughout our history, and they will continue to do so as we move into the second decade of the 21st century. It does bear keeping in mind, however, that the primary purpose of the United States foreign policy, as is that of other states, is the preservation of the liberty and security of our people, not simply identifying grounds for international consensus as soft power and cultural diplomacy are useful in doing. But achieving an international consensus is often instrumental in pursuing the goals of our foreign policy and even essential. When that's the case, we must work to get it. In this more globalized world, there are many instances in which military power and alliances are not adequate tools for achieving our policy objectives in trade or in preserving the environment, we see two examples where soft power can be vitally important and improving other states' understanding of our values through cultural diplomacy can be crucial to reaching consensus on important issues. Moreover, uh, we should remember that the use of force in international relations is generally prohibited except in self-defense or where authorized by the Security Council. So for most purposes, soft power and cultural diplomacy are all we have available to gain international consensus where that is what we need. Now achieving international consensus on important issues requires stable international relations among states whose political legitimacy is secure. This, in turn, depends on governments that respect human rights and political and civil liberties of their people. 
Governments that do not have the support of their people are inherently unstable as they face inevitable internal threats to their power. Moreover, unstable governments are more difficult to negotiate with and they can make unreliable partners even when negotiations result in agreements because their objective is frequently their own regime's maintenance of power, not arriving at agreements that are mutually beneficial to their people and ours. This then is a point that I want to dwell on. Promoting political rights and civil liberties is essential to the effective use of soft power and cultural diplomacy, and these human rights can in turn most efficiently be promoted by soft power methods and if our cultural values are properly understood. However, as I shall discuss, there is an enormous amount of work to be done in the promotion of human rights around the world, so reliance on soft power and cultural diplomacy is bound to uh, be a major component of our foreign policy. <laughs>